Okay guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about open source software and why you should be using it. In 1981, a young graduate student at MIT, Richard Stallman, was doing some printing. And the way it worked was he sent his, his document to the printer, got up, went to the printer to see if it had come out, and it hadn't because there was a print queue. So, so the machine was busy doing someone else's work. And that happened twice, and the printer was on another level, so it involved going up and down some stairs. And at the end of it, Richard thought, this is silly. Why does the printer not just let me know when my document has been finished? Now, anywhere else on the planet, that might have been the end of it. But at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, what he did was he wrote some software, he got it installed onto the printer. And now, whenever someone printed, the machine would do that. It would send an email back to the person saying, your printing's done, come and get it. And everybody loved this. It was a fantastic innovation. Everybody was on board, except the Xerox Corporation. So Xerox and Canon and the other printer manufacturers didn't want someone else's software on their hardware. And this is completely understandable. So if I write some software and I install it on your machine, and something, some harm is caused, who is liable? So I completely understand why Xerox wouldn't want this. With a printer, it would be possible using software to get the machine to, to uh, spew out printer ink, either into the, the, the workings of the printer and ruin the printer, or onto the floor and ruin the carpet. So I understand why they wouldn't be happy. But the episode got Richard thinking. His work progressed and he was involved in some artificial intelligence projects and is often the case in a university, research was spun out into a for-profit company. So some university research was turned into a commercial operation. And when that happened, Richard was told that he had to stop working on the software. This software now belongs to XYZ Corporation. You can't use it anymore destroy everything that you've got related to this to this software and that happened twice and at the end of that he was annoyed enough to do something about it and he set up what's known as the free software foundation and free software uh, yes the, the software is available without having to pay for it but free really meant free as in freedom, the freedom to do what you want with it. So software that was released under the license that Richard Stallman and his colleagues came up with could be changed, adapted, distributed, used in any way that you wanted. Now, in order for that to work, the source code had to be available. So, in, so to change the software, it had to be um, available as source code that people could, could change and edit and, and do what they wanted with it. And very soon after this, Richard Stallman and his colleagues decided to try to put together an entire operating system. Now, they had a bunch of tools that people had contributed and people had worked on, but what they were missing was this, the um, operating system kernel, the bit that, that interacts with the hardware, with the processor inside the, the computer. And they sat down and started to write their own. But while this was all going on, 4,000 miles away in Helsinki, or just outside Helsinki, uh, a young college student called Linus Torvalds, and I'm probably mispronouncing his name, had already started working on a kernel. Now, it was based loosely on something called Unix, which was an operating system developed by a telecoms firm in America. And he was trying to recreate that on his own computer and he decided to share it. And uh, uh, as, as he was about to share it, he put the name Free Unix on it, abbreviated to Freaks. But it was a friend of his that actually shared it with other people. And he changed the name to Linus Unix or Linux. So when all of this uh, uh, software was being released, 
something amazing happened that nobody had expected. So the source code was shared and people started using the software for free, which was great. But very, very rapidly, the free software, which had now been renamed open source software, became better quality than the proprietary alternatives. And the reason looking back is obvious, because you had a lot of users who were using the software and sharing bug reports directly with the people who wrote the software. But you also had extremely technical users who were able to edit the software source themselves and therefore do bug fixes themselves. And I think that this is a fact that is not appreciated even to this day. So still today you get, you get people saying, yeah, I wouldn't want to trust my life to open source software or uh, it's not good enough for us to use or whatever. Um, one legitimate concern that companies sometimes have is we want somebody to be able to sue. So if it goes wrong, we want somebody to have liability. And open source software comes with no liability whatsoever, which sounds good, but actually, if something went wrong with a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, nobody would ever try to sue Microsoft. It's just, it's just silly. Incidentally, almost everyone watching this video has put their life in the hands of open source software. So there were arguments between the American guys and, and Linus in, in Helsinki. And one of the arguments was about what to call all of this. So the American guys, the Free Software Foundation, wanted to call their system GNU. And GNU is, this is how these guys think, GNU stands for GNU, not Unix, G-N-U. Um, and Linus, for whatever reason, won the battle. And people talk today about Linux and they... they mean an operating system, but actually strictly Linux only refers to the, the kernel. And incidentally as well, free software was renamed op open source software again because of, of Linux. So he, he won the battle of the names. Now, um, Linux is used a lot in places where you might not expect it to be because it is so good at linking software with hardware. So anytime that you've got some hardware that needs to be controlled, there's a good chance that Linux is being used. I mean, conceivably it could be used in this. I don't think it is actually in this. It could be in that camera. We're, we're backing up sound on an Android smartphone and Linux is used in, in, in that. But more commonly, uh, there's a good chance if, if you have driven a modern car that the brakes were controlled by Linux. And if you've been to an ATM machine, very often they are controlled by Linux. And there are dozens of other examples. Anytime you've got a processor that needs uh, to interface with something that a human does, there's a good chance that, that Linux is being used. So why should you use open source software? Because it's so good. It's ridiculously good quality and it's also freely available. If you like these videos, subscribe down here somewhere and I will see you on the next one.